All right, so now we're going to talk about the constant multiple rule. So uh, this pretty much just says that uh, d dx of c times f of x equals c times d dx of f of x. So what does that mean? Well, f of x is any function uh, that is differentiable. Okay, in other words, you can take the derivative, otherwise this doesn't make sense. Um, and c represents any constant. So it's, it pretty much just says that if you have, uh, if you're taking the derivative of a constant times a function, then uh, you can just pull the constant out. Okay, so if your function, you know, is like a polynomial that has uh, common factors uh, in each of the coefficients that can be pulled out, then you can go ahead and do that and just pull it outside of the derivative. So, uh, in other words, constant multiples here don't really affect the derivative because you could just pull them out. Um, and it's pretty easy to see why. It's pretty much just because uh, the derivative is a limit, and we know that we could do that with limits. But let's just see it in detail here. So... Um, Let's say we have uh, d dx of c f of x. Okay, so uh, c times f of x, we can just think of that as uh, you know just one function. So if you want, um, let's actually just call this g of x. So we'll just call this uh, g of x. Okay, so in other words, g of x is c times f of x. All right, so then this is going to be uh, the derivative of g of x. Uh, and what's the derivative of g of x? Well, that's going to be uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. All right. But what's g of x? g of x is just c times f of x. So now we can substitute back um, in terms of f of x. And uh, if g of x is c f of x, then g of x plus h is c f of x plus h. And then what we have here is uh, minus g of x, and g of x is just c f of x. So then we have uh, this here. All right, so that's on top. H is still on bottom. So notice here we have c times something minus c times something else. So then what we could do is uh, factor out the c on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and we're going to have f of x plus h minus f of x left, like that. Uh, and then still h on the bottom. Okay, so uh, here this is just a limit, right? So c, now pretty much what we have is a limit as h goes to 0 of all the stuff on top multiplied by c and then divided by h. So uh, c is just a constant, so we can pull out of the limit. Um, so when we, let's go ahead and do that up here because we're kind of running out of room. So we'll say this uh, equals c times all this limit stuff. All right, so um, if you see this, you might be tempted to also pull out h, but remember the limit depends on h. So, of course, we can't pull h out, okay, because the limit uh, depends on h going to zero here. So anything with an h has to stay in there. Um, so now we have c times this stuff here, but what is this stuff? Uh, this stuff is just the derivative of f, right? Uh, limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. So this is c times f prime of x, or uh, in other words, c times uh, d dx of f of x. So this shows that if you have a derivative of c times f of x, then you could just pull the uh, constant c out. So let's go ahead and write it with the same notation that we've been using, uh, c times d dx of f of x. So remember, it's just notation, so it all means the same thing, right? So that's a proof of that. Um, let's see a couple of quick examples. So let's erase this here. Uh, and let's take a look at example one. Uh, let's say we have g of x equals 3x to the fifth. So uh, we want to find uh, g prime of x. So uh, g prime of x, remember that's just a derivative, right? So that means a derivative with respect to x of g of x. And uh, this is the derivative with respect to x of 3x to the fifth. Okay, so I'm just going to show you uh, all the details here just so uh, you hopefully have a more thorough understanding of what's happening. Uh, so here, derivative with respect to x of some constant times x to the fifth. So constant we can just pull out, right? That's what we just saw. So this is going to be 3 times uh, d dx of x to the fifth. And what's d dx of x to the fifth? Well, we know from uh, an earlier video that that's just 5x to the fourth. So this is going to be 3 times.
times 5x to the fourth, all right? And then 3 times 5 is just 15. So uh, this is 15x to the fourth, all right? So um, you know, when you do more and more derivatives, uh, you'll be able to just see this pretty much right away. So here, if g of x is 3x to the fifth, then the derivative is going to be 15x to the fourth. So that's example one. Uh, let's see another example real quick. So let's take a look at uh, example two. So let's say we have uh, h of t equals negative 7 over 12 t to the fourth. And we want to find uh, h double dot of t. So remember, um, if your variable is t, then you can use dots to represent derivatives. So here we have a double dot, uh, two dots, so that means the second derivative. Right? So uh, to get to the second derivative, we've got to find the first derivative. So uh, h of t is this, so then let's find h dot. So h dot of t, remember that just means uh, d dt, okay, not d dx, because our variable is t, so we have to say d dt of uh, h of t. And uh, this is d dt of what's that? Negative 7 over 12 times t to the fourth. 7 over 12 times t to the fourth. Um, definitely put these brackets around here, especially if you have a minus sign in here, because otherwise it just looks really confusing. Um, all right. So negative 7 over 12, kind of an ugly constant, but still just a constant, right? So we can pull it out of the derivative. Uh, so that's going to be negative 7 over 12 times d dt of t to the fourth. Okay? So uh, these brackets here probably aren't really necessary, but it's always good to have them uh, if you're using this notation, uh, just to be as clear as you can, I guess. So um, we know from an earlier video that the derivative of t to the fourth with respect to t is 4 times t to the third. So this is going to be negative 7 over 12 times uh, t, oops, sorry, times uh, 4, actually times 4 t to the third power. Sorry about that. Um, and now let's simplify this. So what we're going to get when we simplify is uh, 4 canceled with a 12, right? And what we have left on the bottom is a 3. So this is actually negative 7 over 3 times t cubed, right? So negative 7 over 3 times t cubed. That's uh, the first derivative, h dot. Okay. So let's zoom back out a little bit. Um, now we want to find the second derivative. So the second derivative, uh, that's going to be h, let's use a different color. That's going to be h uh, double dot, okay? So h double dot of t equals the derivative with respect to t of h dot, right? So remember, the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. So we just found the first derivative, so we're going to take its derivative to get the second derivative. So this is equal to um, d dt of, what was the first derivative again? It was negative 7 thirds times t cubed. Negative 7 thirds times t cubed. Okay. So uh, again, negative 7 thirds is just a constant, so we're just going to pull it out of the derivative. So then this equals uh, negative 7 over 3 times d dt oops, of uh, t cubed. All right. And uh, we know from an earlier video that d dt of t cubed, okay, that's just t to a positive integer power, uh, that's going to be 3 t squared. So this equals uh, negative 7 over 3 times 3 t squared. All right, and then simplify, uh, the 3's cancel, that's nice, no more fractions. So this is uh, negative 7 t squared. All right, and that's our answer, um, h double dot of t equals negative 7 t squared. All right, so that's uh, example 2.